success or failure? What determines whether you're success or failure in any business? Well, today we're going to cover four different things that determines whether you're a success or failure. One is reinvention of the wheel. Two, whether or not you have the same service or a different service than the your competitors. Uh, three, what you know and don't know about a business can, can mean whether you're going to fail or, or be successful. And then, of course, fear of failure itself, which I'll touch on just a little bit later. So folks, let's start with that reinvention of the wheel. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. Now let that sink in. You've heard this phrase before. What it means is, could you start your own medical billing business? Now we teach you to do much more than just the medical billing. We teach you to manage the revenue cycle of the medical office. And that's much more. But when it gets right down to it, the meat of what you do for the doctor is the billing to the insurance companies and the Medicare and Medicaid so that they can get paid. Uh, every time you go to the doctor, of course, you're giving them the insurance card, for example. That means they have to go and get paid from the insurance company for your visit there. Now, sometimes there's a copay and sometimes there's a portion that you as the patient pays, but most people have some sort of insurance and that's why the doctors have to get paid from them. Now, my wife and I, Linda, back in uh, the early 80s, uh, actually late 80s, we started doing billing ourselves uh, for medical providers. And then we grew the business to the point where we actually sold all of our accounts because people were asking us, how can I get started in this business? So we developed a training and support program with marketing tools and ideas that we now teach other people how to duplicate our success basically in this business. Our business includes not just the medical billing, of course, but you also can provide an electronic medical record system that you see there on the screen, EMRX. We also have other services that you can offer the doctor that are all optional, of course, but it sets you apart from the competition. And some of them get you in the door to talk to the doctor or the office manager when maybe they think their billing is under control, right? So you have other ways of attacking and approaching those, uh, those practices. And that's what these other services are all about. Okay, so what does it mean, reinvention of the wheel? Well, first of all, when you start a business, you've got to cover all the things you see here on the screen. Look, every one of these things are important, folks. You have to know about the marketing, for example. What do you do? How do you market a business like this? Well, marketing is one of those things that is uh, probably the most difficult thing for any new business, right? How do I get a client? That's what everybody worries about. Everybody that comes through our class says, well, what, what do I do to get a client? How do I engage with a doctor? How do I get their attention? How do I get past the uh, gatekeeper? Folks, we've been doing this for 25 years. Again, a system that we've worked out has already got all that worked out. And we teach you about a dozen different ways to market to the doctor uh, during uh, that week of training here. Then we have a private website for our licensees that you'll have access to that goes into uh, much, much more depth on all those things. Look, in a week's time, let's face it, you can't learn everything there is to know about any business. Otherwise, you could get a college degree in one week, right? So what we do is we give you that mini MBA in our business to get you started. We teach you enough about the business itself, all the details, medical billing, coding, and so forth, all the marketing ideas during that week's time to go out and get your first client. And then, of course, you can continue to learn from our website that has over probably a hundred hours of training on it. That's all included in our one-time lifetime licensing fee of $27,000. Well, it's $26,990, but that's just because we wanted to price it kind of like Walmart does. Nothing at Walmart is uh, an even number. It's $797 or, or $1097, right? So it's just right at uh, uh, $27,000. We also have training, of course, very important. We're going to talk about all this today. Uh, support, boy, once you've started a business, you better have somebody you can call up and ask questions to. Live demos of the system to show the doctor and the office manager what we have that's the leading edge uh, technology. We have all the contracts and proposals already written and worked out for you. All the marketing tools that you'll need, and I'll show you some of those today. And yes, even coaching for those who like a little hand-holding, step-by-step uh, hand-holding. So we can do all of that. There he is. Hey, Eric, you made it. I did. Sorry for running just a tad late there, but uh, I had to join as a as a panelist, so I, I can't see anything. So I'm just I'm going to just be running shotgun with you this afternoon. 
Okay, well, you've got a copy of the slides there, I guess, so I you do. can kind of know where I'm at. Yeah. You well, look, we're talking about the marketing materials. Why don't you t talk a little bit about some of the marketing flyers and postcards there, Eric? Yeah, you bet. The marketing flyers that you do see there in front of you are obviously are there to help you, assist you in your marketing campaign. I mean, Patrick, I know that uh, nobody likes to print off something from their computer and then take it to a doctor's office. These are these are actually pro-printed type of material that you'll see it that you would see anywhere. Uh, and uh, once they become a licensee, they actually get a part of that uh, marketing material customized with their logo and their contact and all that information on it as well. Yeah, folks, we've spent, uh, gosh, I, I can't even keep up with how much money we've spent designing, testing, and printing these full color matched marketing pieces. That's very important that you're not just, you know, print yep. something off of your uh, dot matrix printer. We yeah. don't have dot matrix printers nowadays. Well, I even your laser you're printer. <laughs> <laughs> In the early days, Eric, I did see some pretty interesting materials that people developed on their own because we didn't have a lot of these materials. So now yeah. we do, and that makes a huge difference there. You bet. Then there's the training. Hey, look, there's Eric down in the bottom right-hand corner. Eric, I can't see if you have your uh, webcam on or not. But anyway, are, are they looking at your pretty face today? I, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, my webcam, my webcam is on. I see it on my side, so I I do get to see that. Oh yeah, okay, all right. Uh, so anyway, folks, uh, these are just shots of the actual training class room. Uh, we hold it again in a, a Marriott uh, Suites hotel right here in the Dallas area. And as you can see, we've got instructors who teach it that are actual licensees. That's right. And then Eric and I, of course, share things as well. My son Adam is involved in this. Uh, our director of operations, Jordan, our support guy, uh, director of support, uh, Chad. So yeah. folks, uh, it's, a, it's a complete training class covering everything you need to know step by step. Again, there are companies who do training, but you know how they do it? Eric, you're not gonna believe this. But there is a company that does simple, some, something similar to what we do. And if you probe carefully what their training is, they call it, uh, I don't know, tele, teletraining or something like that. It just means they're gonna call you on the telephone and and read a script to you. That's, yeah. that's basically what it yeah. is. Yeah. Folks, the difference between that and this is night and day. Hands on, we bring in laptops, put them right in front of you. You can see a picture there up the upper right here where they're actually using the laptop. And so you're doing medical billing by the end of the first day. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Yeah, in, in the, the live experience that, that's happening there is so helpful because of the dynamics of what you're going to be experiencing in the doctor's office. And obviously, with one of our licensees being one of the instructors there, uh, they're going to know what it is going in and out of doctor's office. And so you'll be firsthand with people that are actually going to help you through any particular questions that will actually come up during that training uh, workshop there. Well. Let's talk about support because a uh, part of reinventing the wheel would be that you'd have to kind of, well, like my wife and I did, learn it all on your own. And it took us much, much longer, of course, to get started uh, because we didn't have a licensee support site that we could log into and have all these uh, services and tools and resources and all that we have on the support site. And Eric, I don't know how much is out <laughs> there, but we've been doing that for, what, uh, 10 years now at least. And yeah, that's a I mean lot of stuff. There in it. A lot of hours research. and hours of support. Well, a lot of people have asked, you know, if I get to training and I get out of training, do you give DVDs or CDs? And, and we used to do that of uh, the past training workshops that we've had. But now all of the everything that you're going to learn in that training workshop is actually in a video format on the licensee support side. So if you forget something, you may forget how to do, uh, let's say, the proposal or the uh, practice analysis, you can actually go directly in there and search for that and it'll take you right there, start to finish everything that you need to know, including all the paperwork that you're gonna need to go through it as well. So you've got the entire video and everything that goes along with that. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, let's face it, you're sitting there for eight hours a day and Eric, people don't believe it when I tell them this, but when they come to the training, they realize that those days go by so fast, you will literally look at your, your clock <laughs> at the end of the day and go, it, yeah, it's impossible. Happened? Because our trainers are trained specifically to keep you really tuned into what's happening. It's very interactive. You do some exercises as well as the hands-on. And uh, yeah, you learn a lot every day. But 
let's face it, you're human. You're not going to remember everything. So like Eric said, it's all been recorded and it's all out there on our support site. Eric, let's yeah. talk just a second here about uh, the live demos. I think people uh, are not aware that, you know, we, meaning we have people who are specifically uh, sanctioned by me and the company to do live demos of our system. Why don't you tell them a little bit about how that works? Yeah, um, you know, the, the live demos are just incredible for anybody getting in this business because, again, when you get out of that five days of live training, you only know really what you kind of learned in that five days of live training. But really what you need to learn is how to get in touch with support, get in touch with us, and we're going to actually do a live demonstration of the software. And imagine, Patrick, if you've got someone that has some specialty in iClaim or the specialties that the, the, the licensees are going to go out there and go get, you've got someone that has had some years behind them doing these demonstrations of the, the site, the, the software, and answering the doctor's right. questions. And not only the doctor's questions, they, sometimes even that those office managers, they're the ones that have actually have the most questions. Hey, somebody was asking about the slides. Uh, I did put them over there in the handout section. If you go check that again right now, folks, you'll see that that uh, is out there. It's called What Determines the uh, Blah, 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 the New Business, so forth. So you'll yeah. see it. It's, it's, a, it's a printout of all these slides that we're going through right now. Okay, yeah. uh, Eric, let's talk about the contracts because uh, it's pretty important that people realize we spent <laughs> yeah. at least 100 grand with attorneys, making sure that we have all the agreements between you, uh, the doctor, uh, your sales reps, if you hire sales reps, uh, we have a whole program on how to hire sales reps. And all that's been already worked out. There's probably three or four dozen different uh, contracts that have already been done for you. Right. Yeah, the contract, they're out there. yeah, they're on the licensee support site. I mean, if you were, uh, once you become a licensee, you're gonna find all of those there again in the, the uh, licensee support site. And these are not just the contracts that you're going to do with you and your doctor. You may actually hire some medical billers eventually uh, right. to maybe do some of your, your bigger work. And th there are specific contracts for independent contractors. Uh, I think we've got contracts in there for your uh, sales reps as well. So there are just not just the service agreement contracts. There's several different contracts there for you. Again, we're back to reinventing the wheel. You know, yes. why do that? Why spend the time and money trying to develop all that when, again, that's a part of our package already ready for you. Just like if you bought a franchise, all that paperwork is already done for you. Yeah. Now let's talk about the proposals because once we go through with you and teach you how to do what's called a practice analysis for each practice that you approach, you'll want to come back with a proposal. Well, we've already got that worked out too, haven't we, Eric? Yeah. And again, I, I, I'm glad you, you know, reminded us where we are in this whole thing, what determines the success and failure of a new business. Um, you know, try and, you don't want to you don't want to manipulate anything that Patrick and I are talking to you about right now, because this is where you will find yourself falling or failing into some some areas where you just don't want to to do. So the proposals, again, those have been reviewed by uh, attorneys. Uh, including doctors, I mean, that have looked this over. And so it's pretty tight the way that it is. So the, to get you kicked off on the right foot, you know, you need to know all these pieces that are fitting together. Again, not reinventing the wheel. Eric, why don't we uh, throw up a poll here on the screen? I don't know if they're seeing this right now or not. I've got the screen. I'm seeing it from, I, I actually had to log in as a panelist. So I get, I'm seeing the, the poll. Uh, on my side. So you're going to have to read okay. the poll because I don't see the results there. Oh, good. Okay. So folks, look at the poll that's on your screen right there. You'll see that it's asking you a question about which is the best platform for billing. Now we're talking about whether you install software on your computer or the doctor's computer or both, or whether you have it in the cloud. Uh, now, again, the cloud is just means like, like if you do online banking, when you log in to do your banking, that's in the cloud. It's up there on their servers. Uh, in another location, not in your location. So uh, I'm asking the question, which is the best platform? Is it server-based? Uh, this is for, for for privacy and security uh, of the da data. And as you can see, most people are saying that it is cloud-based. I'm going to close the poll here in about five seconds, and then I'll show you the results on the screen. Now, folks, if you're still over there reading email or watching <laughs> uh, YouTube videos of cats, 
You need yes. to get back to the screen and answer this poll. All right, I'm closing <laughs> that and showing the results here. Eric, tell me if you see the results there now. I do. Yes, I do. And 90% right. of people are saying cloud-based. Yes. And folks, those of you who said server-based, uh, be sure and ask the person who sent you to this webinar. They sent you an email inviting you. That's what we call our business coaches here at ABS. Go back to that person in an email if you want to or call them and just say, hey, explain to me the difference between the cloud and server-based software. And that, that'll be uh, pretty obvious to you when we get through. All right, let's go back to uh, the tools that are available to you and why you shouldn't reinvent the wheel. Eric, yeah. tell us about that, uh, that young lady there standing in front of that <laughs> thing. Well, you know, the tools of the trade, are you're going to need them because sometimes you might want to end up doing a small little fair or um, a trade show or anything like that. We already have a trade show booth. We actually have two of them. We actually have one, this big one that's, uh, I think this is what, seven, eight foot tall. I'm not sure. It is. It's bigger than I am. So, um, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty tall there. And it's, um, and it's there. It's ready to go. All the lights and everything else that you're going to need. Uh, we have a small tabletop as well that we're not showing. So if you want to do like a little trade show or a little fair that's a health fair that you got doctors that are coming together. So those are some of the tools that sometimes you don't really think about when you're getting started in medical billing, because this alone could run you anywhere from maybe three, four, six thousand dollars just for a trade show booth that you might end up using one or two times. And so, yeah. And yeah. we'll just let you borrow it. Uh, yeah, you just pay the shipping cost and we'll let you borrow this anytime you want to hold uh, some sort of trade show. Hey, yeah. Eric, you'll notice that that's very generic. If you yes. folks can look at that uh, very carefully, there's no company name. It's our, our name's not on there, of course. And look what it does. It basically grabs the attention of any doctor that's passing by. This can be done not just at medical affairs and, and workshops and so forth. Any trade show that's out there, folks, a home and garden, an auto right. trade show, it doesn't matter because doctors are human beings and they attend those things. So when right. they see this and ask, you know, see that question, when was the last time your practice had a checkup, uh, it, it grabs their attention. And then, of course, at the bottom, it says, ask how to get your free practice analysis. So that's what we're doing is helping them. And, of course, you uh, have them fill out a little form there and drop it in a box maybe for a giveaway of some kind. Uh, you've been to trade shows, you know how that works, but that's what that's all about. Yeah. And then there's a the tool that you see there on the uh, right side of the page. Let's talk about that for a second, Eric. What's that all about? Yeah, the new thriving medical practice. I know that uh, some have been on our webinars for quite some time, and you've heard us talk about that. You're probably going, wow, they, they, they've really put a lot of emphasis on this book. But Patrick, it, it, it has to have emphasis on this book because many times this is going to be the way in which you get past that gatekeeper. Uh, I mean, these these books can be directly mailed to the doctor uh, and you can write confidential on the front that is getting to the doctor and you talk about how this is going to get there. And then all of a sudden, like you see Patrick doing right now, the person that writes the forward of the book is you, the, the ABS licensee. And that's going to get that connection and, and create a, uh, a trustworthiness to actually see you again and without, again, trying to worry about getting past that gatekeeper. Yeah. And then your contact information, your website, your phone number, and so forth, all that can be there at the end of the forward, which we've already written for you. You just put your name and contact information there. Yeah. It's it's the most credible credibility building tool, Eric, that I know of out there. Uh, it's yeah. ingenious whoever thought of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it may be you. <laughs> well, well, I, I did pull off a book there with Dr. Vicki Rackner, which, by the way, folks, we don't talk much about that, I don't think, in this webinar, but folks, you can actually partner with a doctor. That's right. Partner yeah. with Dr. Vicki Wagner. We're going to show you a little bit more about how to do that. Uh, oh, I, I have to go back to my little pointer here to get to the next slide. Okay, let me go back to the next slide and talk about some other tools. Well, this is just kind of showing a close-up there that your name is right there on the cover. And yeah. Eric, talk to him about that CMRM after Susan Smith's name there. What's that about? Yeah. This stands for a Certified Medical Revenue Manager. And at the end of our training workshop, you're going to get a certification as a Certified Medical Revenue Manager, which is a little bit bigger than what you would think of as just a medical biller, because what you really are, you're really managing the revenue from the time that that patient actually contacts the doctor, really to the time that that doctor gets paid from that patient's insurance company. So you're watching and yep. managing that entire thing. So we certify you as a Certified Medical Revenue Manager. 
Yeah, that's through that MRMA organization that I mentioned at the first of the webinar there. By yes. the way, I've just kind of lost track of the questions here, Eric. I don't know if you can see those or not today. I can't. Uh, I, can't today. I, I had such a struggle trying to get in because I think GoToWebinar has done something differently. I, could, I had a hard time trying to get back into this thing. All right. Well, here's one from Lakeisha. She says, when is the next training? The next training starts in the last part of this month, January 28th. January yeah, that's 20th. coming up in about two weeks. Yeah, you bet. And we do these yeah, we do these about uh, once every, what, six or seven weeks, don't we, Eric? It's depending on the number of people that sign up for them, yeah. Yeah, correct, yeah, you bet. Oh, here's, yeah. uh, here's, a, here's a question from Claude. Without experience, it's going to be hard to have credibility with doctors. How do we market ourselves and emphasize the support provided to the MRMA members? Yes. Wow. Right. That's, that's a great that's question, Paul. Well, it's pretty simple. One of the things you do is build your credibility with that book that we just talked about, yeah. right? That's on the screen there. That's one way you build credibility because why would you have your name on the cover of a book if you weren't somehow uh, certified to be able to help doctors thrive right. in practice? Yeah. 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 Any, any other questions you see there, Patrick? I think that's it for now, but I'm watching that question box, folks. So you just type in any question you want there. You'll see we'll, we'll address that as lively as we can. Oops, I went too far there. All right. Yeah, well, well, let's talk about coaching. coaching. Wow. Yeah. There, yeah this is some of our coaches. We have a few uh, licensees who actually are uh, trained and certified to where they can coach other licensees. That's right. And so as you can see here, Eric, I, I happen to know these people, Tim Warren on the upper left there. That's Corey Craig on the upper right. That's uh, Dean and Claude. Uh, I mean, Brian and Laura Dean. Yeah, Laura Dean. The yeah. And then Benny uh, and Patricia Biorti there on the bottom right hand side. So folks, what we mean by coaching is not only do you get training, but when you get home, if you need somebody to hold your hand, yes. we've got people that we pay to do that. That's right. They're they're contracted with us and they help you uh, in your marketing efforts. So it's it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, you know, a lot of people ask, well, who is my support? I think a lot of people I know that I talk to who's going to be my support. And you're looking at some of those folks and some of these people have specialty doctors that they work with some of the chiropractors or cardiologists or urology or podiatry whatever it might be and those people can we can get those folks to actually help you in with getting started and with your new doctor on their specialty right absolutely and uh, folks we have over a hundred uh people uh, on staff ready to help you through our technology partners. These folks are scattered all over the United States, but they yeah. can help you with any aspect of any of the services that you're offering to doctors. Uh, so yes. we've got plenty of people to support you, uh, believe me. And by the way, have we mentioned that the support is lifetime support? That's right. Not a year, not right. two years, but lifetime support. Hey, uh, Eric, this is the second point that you came up with on what determines the success or failure of a new business. Talk about what it means, same yeah. service or different. Well, at, at one point we were talking about, you know, what is your differentiation? And that kind of gets a little technical there and you're trying to figure out what is the dif differentiation? Well, just like what we, Patrick put up a poll earlier about, you know, server-based versus web-based, you need to have something that's going to separate yourself from all other companies, medical billing companies out there. Patrick, if you, you know this, and I know this, and a lot of people on the call know this, that if you try to go market your business and you have the same identical package as anybody else, then you, you are, you, you're really fighting against trying to get a, a doctor on board with you. But what separates you from others is our platform. And I know this is going to sound like a broken record. We never tell people to go out there and sell our software. But it's the right. software in which separates you from others. And I think we're going to show a few uh, slides here to kind of help, help you understand that. Yeah, so our cloud-based system definitely separates you from the competition. But as you can see in this illustration here, we have a complete system that's unlike anybody else out there, folks. Yeah. Nobody else has the cloud-based practice management system, the clearinghouse built into that system, not a third-party clearinghouse, but built in. 
the electronic medical records and our patient portal, which is unlike anything you've ever seen. Yes. Uh, Eric, why don't you talk to him a little bit about how all this integrates? You know, first of all, it's one system. And, and we've got to make that very, very, very clear. And, and I know that maybe one of our competitors might say that it's not great for you to have your own clearinghouse because it's going to limit you. And I've even hear, heard here recently, Patrick, that it's been said that if we have our own clearinghouse, then it limits us on which doctors we can actually do billing for. And that we, we would like to clarify that now. Having your own clearinghouse actually opens up the door for you to do so much more because there's not a doctor or specialty out there that we can't do billing for. But it does begin with iClaim. And iClaim uh, is, again, it's a web-based billing practice management system. You get to see everything in real time. The billing happens in real time because, again, we're, we're going to show you here in just a moment because we have our own clearinghouse. It's not like you're going to submit a claim and then it goes to this unknown place out there called a clearinghouse. And then you never know whether or not that that claim has actually gone through. Then you have the electronic medical records platform, which is your EMRX. And that's what we're looking at right now. And that's a web-based system there for the doctors to see their patients and actually go through what's called a, a patient encounter. And then you get all of that together. You get the billing done. And then I think you're going to show the next slide here, which is the, the clearinghouse. And the clearinghouse is what's going to pull everything together and run this in a real time process. Uh, Patrick, you know, before you go to the next slide there, I think we really need to make sure that people really, really do understand that we're submitting claims directly to the insurance companies. That is significant. That's a different service than you're going to find out there just about 99% of the time that you go see a doctor. Yeah, because other uh, software uh, that, that does medical billing, folks, when you upload the claims, they're uploaded to a third party company called a clearinghouse that yeah. clears those claims and, and scrubs them clean and reformats them and so forth. And yes. then they forward it on to the insurance companies. Yes. And like Eric said, this is built into our system. This is why our rejection rate on the claims is less than 2% nationwide because, uh, well, as you can see here, uh, Eric, why don't you talk about some of the differences yeah. on clearing houses there? Yeah, the clearing house, I mean, just think of it for us, it's going to be a direct portal directly to these insurance companies. And what a clearing house is going to do is going to catch errors, the first errors. And, and a lot of people say, I have a, let me see if I can say this and people understand it. A lot of billing companies will say they have a less than 2% rejection rate on first submittal claims. But they don't know if that claim is actually through the clearinghouse or if it's actually got to the insurance company. And then the insurance company, Patrick, we all know, can actually reject a claim because of some, some eligibility verification errors or even misspelled name typings of names. It can even pass the clearinghouse, but that's not looking at it holistically. So when we're talking about, you see those two little icons on the right-hand side, the clearinghouse and the insurance companies. Folks, we're dealing with all of that internally and making sure Sure that that gets to the insurance company properly. As you can see, the last part of that uh, saying there, that this provides you a unique difference in the market than any other medical billing service simply due to the lower rejections and expected reimbursements or expedited reimbursements. So when we're talking about expedited reimbursements, we're talking about a doctor getting paid now, Patrick, seven to 10 days versus at least a minimum of 30 days with a separate clearinghouse sitting outside your system. So yes. you and I know having our own clearinghouse, this is a huge advantage and a complete differentiator separator out there in the marketplace that you have to have when you're going to go build your medical billing uh, business. Exactly. Okay. Let's just talk just for a second about a couple of questions here. Uh, you know what? One of them was there, Eric, and I, I read it and then I accidentally hit that little trash can beside it and it disappeared. Oh, wow. So folks, if I don't, don't get to that question, uh, you might put it right back up there, but here's one uh, from Shariah says, uh, training, oh, how can you be able to handle medical billing after five days of training? While the medical business training takes, medical business training takes months. How can you be able to handle medical billing after five days training while medical business training takes months? Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, some people are under the impression, uh, Shiraz, that 
that it takes months or that you have to go to a, you know, a whole college course or something on coding and billing and so forth. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to go maybe work for a doctor, but to start your own business, you'll get the basics in five days. Believe me, at the it, by the end of the first day, we have them doing medical billing, don't we, Eric? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the and but the, but to go further than answering just that question about what you're going to get in the five days, it's the 25 years of experience that we have here at ABS. Because you're right, you right. can't learn medical billing in five days. There's just no, there's no way. That's why right. we have the coaches. We have the support, the lifetime support. So you're not just doing this by yourself. You've got an entire team and 25 years of experience in billing to help you, assist you with that. Now, having said that, we have licensees leave our training and get their first client within the first, you know, sometimes a week, uh, depending on whether they've talked to people, you know, maybe beforehand, uh, 30 days, 60 days. Folks, it does happen. And listen, yeah. once you've got a client that's willing to pay you to do their billing, believe me, you will learn. Uh oh, Patrick, are you are you there? Patrick, can you hear me? Let's talk just a second here about the patient portal, because, man, this thing is pretty cool. Yeah, the patient portal uh, allows me as a patient, <laughs> the doctor signed up on this, it gives me the opportunity uh, to sign in. But more importantly, I love this, Patrick. Um, it, it, when the doctor has our complete system, like you're showing right now, we can actually have a what's called a telemedicine visit, or what we call it an e-visit. So here's you got the patient on one side, you got the doctor on the other side, and you're having this inter interface between each other without you even going to the doctor. Yes, many, many times I've gone to the doctor and you know they never touch you, uh, except maybe take your blood pressure, I can do that myself. Right. <laughs> and uh, But they'll charge you the same amount of money. Telemedicine is less expensive and again, the doctor can ask you all the questions. In fact, if you want to show them something, uh, maybe there's a cut on your hand or whatever, you just hold it up to the camera there, here, see? <laughs> and so the doctor, we're, folks, the future is that we're going to have more and more uh, telemedicine visits because more and more insurance companies are paying for it. Uh, even Medicare now is paying for it, right, Eric? In some right, care. you bet. And so it's, it's just getting to be... Well, it's the future. That, that will save so much time and effort for so many people. Yeah, you bet. So much more time. And the doctors can be efficient. And then they, the patients that they do need to see in their office, they can get to those people and get to those people quicker. Right. All right. Here's the whole complete system illustrated. Uh, Eric's put a wonderful uh, diagram together here showing how the patient can log in over here. You see, let me get my little marker here. Uh, this is where the patient is actually logging into our patient portal that we just talked about. The doctor is using on their tablet or iPad, the electronic medical record system. That all goes into our iClaim system, which you're using from your computer to actually receive that information from the doctor and the patient and do the billing. And of course, then it goes out directly to the insurance companies because this little illustration is trying to show you here that that third party clearinghouse is not separate. We don't take time to forward the claims to some third party. We've done it within our system, and that's the only reason we're doing less than 2% rejection rate out there. Yeah, less than 2%, getting doctors paid within 7 to 10, less than two weeks, let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah. so it's just, it, it's just a clean system. And whenever, Patrick, you've got uh, your patient portal, your doctor's portal, the billing portal, the clearinghouse portal, all working together. Uh, simultaneously and there's no glitches because you're not trying to figure out if you interfaced with with the proper EMR system or the correct patient portal it's just all working together now let me kind of explain what you just said there Eric that might have escaped some people because folks if you haven't if you haven't looked at other systems that are available out there for doing medical billing some of them will even claim to be cloud-based but what they mean is that you've got to buy and set up and manage in your own office a complete separate server, another computer server sitting there in your office. And then you have to put a piece of software on the doctor's computer, a piece of software on your computer, another yeah. piece of software that 
makes them talk to one another. It's very convoluted. And unless you've got a full-time IT degree, you don't want to have to handle that yourself. And that's what they mean when, when we talk about server base, that's what we're talking about. You don't mess with all that folks when you can just log in from any device that's connected to the internet directly into our cloud-based system. It's just, it's just wonderful. Here, here's a question from Claude. Is there a fee for coaching? No, that coaching is included in your lifetime, one-time uh, licensing fee with ABS. As I said earlier, we, meaning the company, pays those other licensees for their time that they spend coaching you. That's right. right. That's all included. Yep. Um, okay, uh, here's one from Robert. Are we responsible to sell our services to doctors, reps, et cetera? Well, let's talk about that for a second because we've talked a little bit about marketing, Robert. And when we say that, when you say, you're, are, are we responsible to sell? First of all, there's nothing to sell. We do show you how to market your services to doctors, of course. And so we're going to teach you how to fish. We're not going to give you a fish. We're going to teach you how to fish. Yes. That's right. how you build a business on your own and can be completely independent is with our help, our coaching, our handholding uh, step by step. You bet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's saying no sound here. Oh, no, it's back. He says, okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. It's, I thought you went out for a little bit, so I'm not sure if it was on your side or my side, but I, I, I did not hear you for a little bit here, but I think we're all we're all good here. Oh okay. so the, the third one here is as we're getting wrapped up. I mean, Patrick, I don't know if you're looking at the time, we got about 15 minutes, maybe 14 minutes left. But uh, the third yeah. thing that's to determine your success or failure of a new business is what you know and really what you don't know. I think and that's the biggest fear for everybody is what you don't know. Yes, uh, a huge thing that people don't realize about starting any business is there's going to be some things that you think, you know what, I think I'll do this uh, before I get started. Or maybe you want to even do some uh, what we call uh, pre-marketing. Eric, talk about what that means for people, because uh, some people want to talk to their own doctor or other doctors before they even come through our training. That's a mistake. Yeah, you know, I, I've talked to so many people about whether they want to, you know, obviously, the, the ideal thing for anybody to do would be actually have one or two doctors on a hook before you get to training. And I know that everybody's wanting to figure out, can I figure out if this is actually going to work for me before I spend that investment? And, you know, I wish there was something that we could do to go do that, but you need the training. But what happens if you go out there and start to what we call pre-market, see, test the waters, see if there's doctors in your area that actually need billing. What's going to happen is because you don't know what you don't know, you you could possibly burn up an incredible lead that's out there that you're going to go, oh, man, I, I, I felt, you know, like they would say, you laid an egg in front of a doctor. And you can't ever go back to that doctor ever again because you just ruined your reputation. And that's what's happening is that a lot of people go out there, they try to test the waters or pre-market and, you know, you just, you just, you lose your reputation. And so that's why no, we so, yeah, you got it. You don't, you don't know <laughs> what you don't know. So what if the doctor yeah. asks a question that you haven't been prepared for? We are there to back you up. You can pick up the phone right there in the doctor's office and call our support people and ask them a question that you don't know. Just say, you know, that's a, an insurance question. I have an insurance specialist back in my office. Well, let me get them on the phone. Yeah. You don't want to do that, though, folks, because it makes you look like you're not prepared. And so, again, we, we encourage people not to do that. So that's what we mean by you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, ABS is going to assist you in your marketing. There's there's all kinds of things that we can do to help you uh, in this whole revenue cycle management business. It's it's not complicated. It just breaks yeah. down to these four things that you see right here. But once you've been taught how to do those things, now you can go out and talk semi-intelligently you bet to people yeah and that kind of goes back to the question i think we was asked earlier how can you learn medical billing in five days well we're going to hand hold you through this whole process we're going to assist you with your marketing you're going to learn a lot of medical terminologies that you're just going to have to learn and this is just a sampling i mean i, I know that we take uh two or three hours just to kind of go over medical terminology that you're just going to have to learn uh you know it it's just a myriad of different things that you're just going to have to know uh, before you go out there. Obviously, I think everybody knows Medicare and Medicaid. 
you know, and, you know, but a lot of people don't know what CMS stands for, which is Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, or the, what ICD-10 codes are, or what CPT codes are. So we're going to teach you that during that training workshop and know to at least speak intelligently. Yeah, exactly. Um, and of course, you need to learn the correct questions to ask the doctor. Oh, we talked yeah. earlier about talking to a doctor. You, unless you know what to ask that doctor, you don't know how to prepare the proposal to take back and say, here's what I can do for you. So Eric, talk to them about what they're looking at here on the screen. Yeah, I mean, two things, two major things that you're gonna have to have in, in your toolbox, so to say. The left is what's called a practice analysis questionnaire, which that is chock full of the questions made up by professional billing companies with American business systems. Uh, and then you take that information and you put it over in the practice revenue report. Now that's actually going to give you a bottom line, as you can see way down at the bottom, once you put in all the numbers that you collected from that questionnaire, and you're going to get to show the doctor really kind of how much money that they could be losing, but they're really losing right now, but what they could gain by going with you. And, you know, if you look at that number, $320,000 more a year, you know, many times a doctor says, gosh, if you could get half of that, I'd be ecstatic. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it, it gets to the bottom line. And this is why you don't have to sell anything. This is where we don't have to sell a software because we're just showing the doctor um, what their problem is, what their need is. Patrick, you and I both know we're both getting older. <laughs> we go to the doctor. The doctor says you have X disease or it looks like you're going to get that. And then the doctor tells us our pain. And then they're going to say, you're going to have to get this procedure done or whatever else done. I'm not asking, you know, well, gosh, is he trying to sell me a pig and a poke? You know, I know that he's trying to get me healthy. And that's what we're trying to do the doctor here. Yeah. Uh, as we go to this next slide, Eric, this is a great question here from Brian. He says, how do you get the doctor to switch from the current system that they're using? And how long does it get them uh, does it take to get them switched over yeah now yeah. looking at what you're seeing right here brian you can see that we have a complete system so do some licensees let the doctors stay on their current system yes for a period of time because you can do the billing and you can find somebody that actually knows a system uh you can find them out there easily uh to to actually do the billing for their system but you eventually want to move them to our system because ours is the only one that has all four of the components that you see here that are all integrated. Right. So once you go through our training, you'll see that, in fact, if you listen to some of the interviews, I'm, I'm going to interview Wendy Bruno uh, next week, Eric. Right. And uh, she's been with us now, as you know, for many, many years. And she says, Patrick, I have people who are doing the billing initially for doctors on their own system. But then once we show them all the advantages of our system, you know, because once you're in the door, you're in the door, right? You're a, you're a part of their team. She says, yeah. then they'll, they'll, they always eventually switch over, you know, to, to uh, the iClaim EMRX system. Right. Yeah. You bet. And because and it's, it's superior. Yeah. And, and, and this again, is under what you know and don't know and what you need to learn there that you're not having to sell anything because we don't say you need to learn what you're going to sell you're going to need to learn what your solution is. And once you know what your right. solution is based upon that prior uh, questionnaire that Patrick just showed you, then it leads to the solution because the doctor is going to say, what are you going to do to get me to those numbers? That's why a doctor will switch over and it, and it won't take too terribly long to get that done. No, it won't. Well, uh, one of the things that falls into this category of what you know and you don't know is uh, what we talked about earlier, and that is you have to have support. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back to training, the good stuff in the middle, and the last part of it, which is support. And uh, now we got all that sandwiched in there. Uh, you bet. Having the support behind you to answer those questions. And again, many times it's us on the call, like we're doing right now with a go-to webinar, just as a go-to meeting. We are answering the questions for you, for your doctor. So you talk about makes you look like you know what you're talking about. Exactly. Hey, here's a question from Claude. Uh, are any licensees certified professional coders, CPCs? He's uh, got the uh, designation there. 
are certified professional billers, CPB. I've been looking into both certifications from the American Academy of Professional Coders. Now, <laughs> Eric, we've talked about this before. Of course, yeah. we certify people and give you a certificate at the end of the training that says you are a certified medical revenue manager. We're the only organization that certifies with that certification. So the CPP, CPC and the CBB are just certifications that that this organization came up with. So everybody could come up with their own certification. It has no uh, relevance in the marketplace whatsoever. A doctor doesn't know the difference between CPC, CBB, MRM, CMRM, or anything else. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you want to get a, a, be a CPC or a certified professional coder, you can do that. It's going to take you at least a minimum three and a half to four years to get that. That's why we have one of our services as the coding aspect of it. Now, we've, we've talked about coding services on other webinars, but that coding part of it will eliminate you having to spend the money to get a, be a certified professional coder. We already have that in your bucket of services that you have already. So just use them again as you need them. Yeah, so what it boils down to is this, folks. There is no nationally recognized certification for medical billing. It's just not there. Every right. certification you've ever seen has been developed by the organization that does the certification. Uh, but the, the government doesn't issue any licenses. There is nothing that's official uh, in any respect there. Ours is just as official as anybody else's certification. In fact, yeah. probably more so because we are the nation's largest network of medical revenue managers that are out there yeah. doing medical billing. We, we're the largest. There is no other uh, right. organization that's been. Okay, yeah. here's an, uh, a question. Shiraz says, what is the income potential in this business? Now, Shiraz, that's a tough one to answer on this one because we're running out of time. We weren't focused on that, but we've done webinars on that subject. Go to, uh, what would be the best way for them to do that? Eric, just go to our, our blog that's on our website. Yeah. That's at the bottom of the screen here. Go to absystems.com at the top. You'll see blog under news, I think it is. And on the blog, you'll actually see webinars, dozens of them that we've done over the past few years, and many of them deal with the actual uh, income uh, yeah. revenue possibilities. You bet. Yeah, you bet. Okay, let's talk about that last uh, thing there, Eric, the fear of failure. That's a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah, it's a big thing. That's, the, that's, the, that's, that's probably the one that's, that stymies everybody. It, it keeps you from moving forward. And, you know, uh, what determines success or failure sometimes is just the fear of failure that gets you. And, and you, yeah. you've, everybody's heard the, this and you, it's not like screaming in your ears. You don't even know what to do, but you know, I think Patrick, you're better qualified for kind of talking through this one because you've written a book about this and, but you know, it's based upon, you know, the, your internal voices saying you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not capable enough to succeed. You'll never get a doctor. You know, you're going to spend twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars and you're just going to be blowing it. You might as well just throw that, that money away. These are the things that will keep you from success. And you can't let that stop you if that's what you're going to want to try to do. That's right. And as Eric said, and he showed earlier that uh, I did write a book called How to Reprogram Yourself for Success. This yeah. has to do with that negative self-talk that's going on inside your head. So let me suggest this, Eric. Yeah. Uh, why don't we just tell people to uh, get back with the person who invited you to this webinar. Go we'll find yes. that email, reply to it, or call them up. Their phone number's in there. And just say, I'd like a copy of that book. We'll send you a free ebook that yeah. is this entire book. Uh, you can go out to Amazon and buy it for, uh, I think, seven ninety five dollars or something like that. But don't do that. We'll give you a copy of it, electronically at least, that you can just read on your own. And you'll see that that will help you with that negative stuff that's going on inside your head. Yeah. Well, there's the summation of what we uh, covered today, Eric. Uh, thanks for putting this together. This is a great, uh, a great example of why yeah. people can fa fail in business or why they can be successful in business. So, yeah. you bet. Put that you bet. Hey, we got a, we've got a lifetime uh, a money back guarantee. I should say, hundred percent money back guarantee, folks. I don't know of any other company that does what we do. We let you come to our live training right here in Dallas. You can sit through it for an entire week get all the proprietary information during that. And if at the end of the workshop, for any reason, you know, like you don't think Eric looks good or whatever, 
<laughs> he's not as handsome as you thought he would be in real life. You can say, look, I want my money back and 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 we'll just just tell any of our staff members and they'll arrange for you to receive a full refund of the license fee. That should tell you folks that we're pretty sure about what we're doing.